Coming up on the DMT One to One Show, episode 55, on the 9th of April 2014, an interview with Tom Giles, the CEO at Stageblock. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show, the weekly show where we feature uh, some uh, fantastic new startups but also established companies. Uh, and the show comes out every week. You can find it on digitalmusictrends.com and follow the links to the DMT One to One Show. And uh, this week it's a real pleasure to welcome Tom Giles, uh, CEO at uh, Stageblock. So hi Tom and thanks for joining us. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. And so I want to hear all about StageBlock. And so first of all, give me a bit of a backstory. Uh, how did the company start and what is it all about? Yeah, so StageBlock is an extensive self-serve platform for artists to help them understand and engage their audience. And at the end of the day, own those relationships so that they can directly market and sell more effectively. Yeah. So kind of the whole goal is just you know really helping people understand those fans own the relationships unlike they do on Facebook and Twitter and so forth, and then be able to take advantage of that to communicate more effectively and sell stuff. Um, And it kind of started out of my own personal background. Um, So I was actually stuck in bed recovering from experimental reconstructive hip surgeries. Right. And yeah. (laughs) And I. (laughs) No, it, it wasn't. And I was bored out of my mind. So I taught myself to code. And I realized that you know there, there was nothing I could do other than go online. Um, so I built the original version of what eventually became StageBlock is just a way for me to kind of start connecting and doing stuff online. And it evolved. And next thing I knew, my band was using it, uh, my friends' bands, and then it just it, it kind of took off. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, uh, mm-hmm. from from there, sort of, how did you start uh, scaling it uh, so that you could cater to uh, bigger <laughs> ar- bigger artists and bigger projects? Because of course, uh, you are based in Chicago, so you, you weren't uh, uh, m- you didn't have access, I guess, to the same people that people that live in New York or Los Angeles uh, do. Yeah, the the location definitely didn't help in that regard. Yeah. Um, but it actually it, it it was quite nice because it allowed us to really focus on building the product. Right. Um, so for for a long time, we've kind of flown under the radar. So many people haven't heard of us, even though we've been working and have projects with Justin Timberlake and Kit Rock, you know, it, Eric Church, some some pretty big names. Um, but we've been able to focus on the product, and so for us kind of how we did the scaling, how we really built it out, was build up a really strong product team. So here in the Midwest, we were able to find some extremely talented developers who love music just like I do. Um, And then we started working with Topspin. So back in the very, very early days of Topspin, we did... Uh, we we worked very closely with their creative services agency. So we're Um, talking, uh, what year was that? Oh my gosh, uh, three years ago? Four? I. It, it, it was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, like, um, I, I don't remember what the exact first thing that we did. It might have been something for Eminem or honestly, I'm not sure. But the, sure. the one that really stuck out to me where it was like, okay, we're, we're really, we're really on to something here. And I'm learning a lot was when we did the social network soundtrack offer right. page. Um, so that, that was pretty huge. And from my perspective, we took all those experiences as uh, ways to really kind of test some of our theories, really build out stuff. And we took all those experiences and evolved StageBlock. That's cool. And so uh, t- tell us about those, uh, you know, you t- we're talking about product and uh, it's such an important part of the experience for mm-hmm. consumers. And so uh, what did you see as being the, the core features that you developed that uh, you think really made the difference in the success of StageBlock as a platform? Yeah. Um, so there, there's a couple of things. Uh, like we, we've really focused on making it as easy as possible, um, where we have hosted sites. So kind of like a Tumblr setup where yeah. you can just, yeah, so you can log in and, and select an offer page theme or a store theme or a Bandcamp like theme where then you've got store and audio. Um, and so kind of having that where it's just really easy to get that set up. But then combining the rest of the the circle so bringing right. in commerce so giving that you know the full commerce component um, then giving you the actual email marketing as well so now you you're bringing your fans in um, you're able to see understand what they're doing follow their purchase behavior then you're able to message them directly and kind of close the loop um, and the the more recent really interesting one to me has been fan clubs um, so we actually yeah. built in uh, a very extensive fan club uh, community based functionality set and that that really rounds out everything quite nicely and from the from the uh, uh, large artists that you've uh, mentioned before like Justin Timberlake mm-hmm. are were all those experiences uh, free fan clubs were they paid paid fan clubs and uh, how does that work 
Yeah, uh, so so those ones, it, it's been interesting. Now, people have been using stage block in a lot of different ways. Uh, like, what was it, uh, two weeks ago or so, the Pixies launched their latest album on stage block. Yeah. So they didn't even use the fan club functionality. They just used the, the store and pre-order stuff. Modest Yahoo did that as well. Um, but then there's like Justin Timberlake who's using totally free fan club. He's just using it for the fan club functionality, and yeah. he also has a mobile one as well. Um, or you can go to Eric Church. Eric Church is using uh, every aspect of Stagebox. So he's often where I get really excited because he's kind of getting the, uh, that entire closed loop experience. Uh, so he has free levels for his fan club. You can just sign up for free, interact with other people, submit content. Or you can have uh, one of two paid or premium account plans where you get merch items and access to pre-sale uh, tickets and so forth. Yeah, and so yeah, that's that's important to point out actually that mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh, large scale projects so far, but actually yeah. Stage Block can cater to smaller artists as well, right? Yes, uh, yeah, that's so. My my dream is uh, for Stage Block to be end to end, you know, the entire tail and head of the the market. So really allowing, yeah, giving all the 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 pro tool like functionality for people like a Justin Timberlake who can really dig in and use all that functionality, but then building it in a way that anybody can use it. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting, and it's going to be interesting to see yeah. what kind of traffic you get as well in the next few weeks, given the strange uh, situation that's uh, happening with Top Spin in the last uh, sort of ten days or so that's materialized. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's I, I I got to know a lot of people over there really well, yeah. um, so it's been it's been a little hard to watch that happen, um, but it, it definitely has been strange and, and interesting to watch from the sidelines. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see how, how artists really re react because now that we've learned that the two sides are going to be separated, then of course the artists are going to have to pick their battles and decide uh, you know, how, how, how much they're going to trust the, the new product going forward. But uh, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm sure that they're going to do great stuff on, on, on their front as well. And looking at uh, sort of the, the fan club uh, and the sales side of things, uh, mm -hmm. how hard uh, uh, do you push for sales of, as part of the fan club experience? And is that just the part mm -hmm. of the site that fans get to explore? Or is there any active way in which artists uh, try and uh, occasionally remind, uh, remind fans that they can actually buy stuff on the site? Yeah, uh, so that's a, a big reason why we built in the email marketing functionality directly into Stagebox. So the, the artists can build up their newsletters or their mailing list directly in Stagebox and then communicate with them. Right. Um, so you can, you can do a lot of that. Uh, we've, we've made Stagebox though, where if you as an artist just want to use the, the commerce functionality, you can, um, but yeah. you don't have to, you don't even have to use the fan club stuff. You can use bits and pieces. Um, it works best when you start pulling in more of that, because then we can help you find relationships between the different actions and, and connect the different services and really fully close that loop. Yeah. Um, but y you can use it piecemeal. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. That's awesome. I, I, I was just thinking about fulfillment. You know, that's that's a big part of uh, of the issues that come when when you do uh, e-commerce uh, for bands. And so, do you guys do any of the fulfillment yourselves? Is it left to the bands? How how is, how is that managed? Yeah. So we have a couple of partners that we've already uh, set up and been doing a lot of work with. Um, so we do have fulfillment partner integrations. Um, we ourselves don't do that, but we work so yeah. closely that it, it's a very similar setup as Topspin had. Um, and we're actually set up where we can integrate new fulfillers very quickly. So if people yeah. come to us and they say, hey, I'm working with this fulfillment company, can you integrate with them? We typically do that in you know, a couple of days, so very fast. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, if, if you're... You know, thinking about how artists are managing their, their presence these days, uh, there mm -hmm. seems to be a growing focus on uh, you know mailing list presence and direct uh, uh, fan access, especially as we're seeing a, a growing amount of. Uh, 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 I guess grumblings towards Facebook uh, <laughs> this week, especially we've seen a, a bunch of articles around uh, reach, which is uh, uh, decreasing uh, time and time again. And of course, you know that's Facebook's business model, but it might not work for artists uh, who have to keep paying to reach their fans. And so, uh, on that front, do you see a, a growing interest from the artist community to develop their own uh, their own communities and, and try and get out of that uh, loop? Yeah, that, that's that been a, uh, something that we've been seeing a lot of interest in, um, especially because you know, you're spending all this time and money building up these fan bases on Facebook, 
and then you're you're having to spend even more time and money to reach a, a dwindling number of them. Yeah, um, it just it doesn't make sense. Uh, so, with the fan club stuff that we built up, um, we're actually seeing on average typical kind of post lifetimes of like seven days as opposed to yeah. thirty minutes on Facebook. And we're seeing other things where you're able to reach you know on average something you know upwards of like sixty percent of your fan base, which is just obnoxiously large in yeah. the industry. Um, so it's going really well for us in in those regards. And yeah, there definitely seems to be a growing interest, especially within the past few months. Yeah. And uh, um, talking about the community, so how is that organized mm-hmm. on, on the on the fans side of things? Because uh, uh, one of the uh, interesting aspects that I've, I've noticed over the last few months is that uh, I'd given the existence of uh, forums, for example, uh, as, you know, a dead in the waters yeah. because of social networks. But that, that's not actually true at all, because uh, there are a lot of uh, communities, niche communities here and there that uh, still thrive on forums and uh, sort of internal uh, mechanisms of communication. So how, how do those work in, 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 uh, in the fan club? And have you seen those kind of phenomena of fans getting together and actually starting their own thing, uh, aside from the artists getting involved at all, at all in a sense? Yeah, and that's that's really interesting. A lot of our focus and most of what we've been seeing has been the artists starting it and then the yeah. fans rallying around that specific brand. Yeah, I mean, sure. so w- with kind of how we've set it up, it's, it's less about stage block. It's more about the artist uh, brand. They're, they're front and center. And that th- there's definitely been a lot going on there. However, we have started to see a few other people um, just creating up fan clubs independently. Um, yeah. of the artists and really engaging around there. So there's definitely an interest in the fans and there's definitely a need from the actual artist perspective. And we're trying to make it really easy then to bring those components together in this just kind of total encompassing platform where you know, we, we look out and saw all this fragmentation of you know, d- various different services. Um, everybody's using Facebook, Twitter, MailChimp, you know, all these different things. We, we're trying to bring all that into one place, one dashboard, where it's just a lot simpler and easier to do everything. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, uh, looking at also, you know, your board of advisors uh, talking about that mm-hmm. context, you know, Ethan Kaplan is one of your advisors as yeah. well. And he actually started REM's uh, website yes. where he sort of uh, <laughs> on, on his own as a fan and then ended up, you know, doing the website for them in, in the early days of the internet. So uh, that kind of stuff ha- can happen. It doesn't happen anymore that much because, you know, the artists are very well organized these days online. So <laughs> it doesn't yeah. quite happen as organically, but uh, uh, you never know. It's, uh, it's one of those things that sometimes uh, communities take a life of their own and uh, and uh, artists can come in and actually uh, take advantage of that sometimes which is quite fun uh, and uh, so uh, looking forward uh, what are you seeing as the major developments for the platform uh, for the next year or so and what are your uh, core mm-hmm. areas of focus so some of our core areas of focus are starting to surface a lot more of the data Right. So if we can be giving all this information back to the artists, you know, what, what is your fan base demographics? Where, where are their locations? Who's, who are your super fans? What are their average values? You know, giving all this back, then we know that that'll help the artists themselves uh, be able to sell more effectively, be able to just, you know, run their band more effectively. And that then helps us, helps build the community. So for us, that's a big deal, is yeah. giving all that data back, making it as easy to understand as possible. Um, so that's, that's kind of the first one. And then the second one that goes very much along with that is really building out even more robust messaging functionality so that once you understand who these fans are, once you know all this data, you can set up automated emails. You can do a whole bunch of different things. Um, th- that's, that's kind of the two main focuses. Yeah. Uh, we'll also be doing a bit more in the mobile space. So we've got a couple of different apps coming out yeah. that really extend the total experience with uh, Stagewalk. And again, providing as much of it as we can for free um, because you know, as musicians ourselves, we, we kind of understand how that game is played. Yeah, and is it getting better on the on the mobile front uh, uh, to actually p- process a purchase on, on your end? Uh, is, is it still a bit of a pain, or uh, have you have you seen improvements on that front? Um, you know, with, with Apple uh, taking thirty percent, it, it it adds a couple of hoops that you have to yeah. jump through. Sure. Um, so there's there's ways around that, and you know we're working on that. Um, 
I don't know if it's gone any better, and I yeah. don't know if it's going to change. <laughs> uh, but we're certainly doing our best. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a, a shame that uh, for all the progress that we've we've made, it, it still feels like the the easiest way to pay outside of the Apple ecosystem is using something like a PayPal or something like that right now because people know their login details and they can just enter that and log in. But uh, at the same time, that takes a big cut. So it's not it's not a fun thing to watch if you have to implement that kind of thing because uh, yeah, it's uh, where, a good chunk of your pie going away. <laughs> yeah, and, and one of the kind of interesting things about the Stagebox network is that like PayPal, once you've logged in the one time, um, you're able to just one-click checkout or one two-click checkout. So exactly. you know, say you've bought something from Eric Church, um, then that same person would be able to come buy that from you know, maybe my own personal band that I play in. Yeah, and so that in that context, actually, it makes sense to start uh, surfacing the brand a little bit more, so that people are aware that they are using StageBlock as uh, a medium to purchase uh, items from artists. And this, if they see that uh, login again, they can say, "Oh, yeah, I've already bought something there, so it's going to be easier this time around." Uh, so that 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 could definitely help. Yeah, that that's a fine line that we're trying to walk. You know, making sure that people can understand that, yeah. but really, really recognizing and trying to emphasize the fact that. You know, people care about the artists, so yeah. it's that brand that should be front and center. Unlike, say, on Facebook, where it's it's all about Facebook, and you as a user and artist just happen to be on it. Yeah, we're yeah. trying to flip that model. Yeah, and so you talked about free and premium. So uh, talking about mm -hmm. the, the money side, uh, is that the core way in which you you, you generate revenues, and then you, uh, perhaps you do bespoke uh, uh, projects for for the bigger artists. Yeah, so kind of as, as a typical business model, we're trying to set it up so that anybody can use StageBlock for free. Yeah. Um, but we do have paid or premium account plans where maybe you want to send uh, you know, 100,000 emails a month, or maybe you uh, want to only have us take 6 or 3% of your merchandise sales. Yeah. That's typically when and where people would upgrade to a paid account. Um, so then the second part is we do take a small commission on uh, sales yeah. um, where you know, if you're selling more, then we're going to make some, um, but you don't have to sell anything. Uh, so there's that. And then we do take on the occasional uh, camp or custom project as well because uh, we use those as projects to really build out the platform as a hell and give back exactly. to the larger community. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so, and so that's that's awesome. And if uh, anybody wanted to check out the platform, it's uh, stageblock.com, right? Correct. And yes. it's with a C, not with a K, just in case people got confused. Uh, but I'm sure <laughs> you're, you're going to be able to. If you're watching the video, you're going to be able to see that. And uh, if not, it's going to be in the file name of of all the episodes uh, on SoundCloud, Mixcloud, uh, uh, iTunes, and all the rest of it. So uh, there's no chance of misspelling it. And uh, well, uh, Tommy, it was a real pleasure talking to you today. And uh, again, it's uh, stageblock.com. Go and check it out. Uh, thanks for your time, Tom. Thank you very much. And thanks for tuning in to the DMT One to One show. It comes out every week. You can check it out on digitalmusictrends.com and follow through to the links to the One to One show or uh, find it on iTunes. I've just added some uh, nicer looking, much more uh, intuitive icons for iTunes so you can uh, subscribe from there. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week and until next time.